rage on that beat going crazy. Okay, welcome to the Unpopular Opinion series, where I, Wonder Possessed, go into the deep ends of Reddit or anywhere on the internet to find the most outlandish opinions about your favorite or not so favorite shows. By the way, you can write your own unpopular opinions in the comment section and I might just decide to use it for a video. Honestly, everyone can join the creative process on this channel. Now then, our first case takes us to Reddit, where we have three posts that I've summarized together to form one. Our first Redditor says, Poe is ridiculous in his own franchise. Our second says, would you say Poe is kind of a garish too? And our third says, it's irritating how Poe barely knows Kung Fu. If you read through each of the Reddit posts, link in the description, you'll understand that they are all approaching the same idea. That is, Poe is overpowered. So I just brought it together because I honestly can't make a video about all three posts. With that being said, we are going to investigate to find out, is this unpopular opinion fact or is it false? Now during the investigation, I was able to put together clues that favor each corner. The first clue out of three that favors the fact corner is Poe beats Tai Lung. There's a reason why I did not include Shen or Kai and you'll get to understand that later. If you nitpick the first part of Kung Fu Panda, you'll understand that there is no way or reason Poe should be capable of beating Tai Lung. Not just beating Tai Lung, but more or less mauling him. Tai Lung in part one was arguably the strongest character in that movie. He was a master of Kung Fu even to the extent of controlling Chi, which the movie had not even explored yet. While studying his fight with the Furious Five, you get that he equals fighting five masters of Kung Fu at the same time, a feat that Po cannot do, since it was pretty clear that he struggles to fight Tigress in part 2 and 3. But for some reason, Po, who just learned his style of Kung Fu a few minutes ago, ends up pretty much erasing one of the strongest masters of Kung Fu in the franchise. That is pretty impressive. Our second clue that favors the fat corner has more to do with Poe's ability to learn Kung Fu techniques. That is, Poe learns the Wushi Finger Hold and also in a piece. The Wushi Finger Hold is a technique that was only shown to Poe once in the movie. A move done by masters who have perfected their craft and to everyone's surprise, the black and white killer machine was able to learn it without being taught. While with inner peace, there is more of a ground to this, being that he overcomes his past, therefore, he should be able to perfect this. But where this plays into the fact corner is how fast he did it when compared to other masters. With Shifu, it took him almost his entire lifetime and for some masters, they stayed in caves for up to 50 years without food or water. That was what Shifu said. But for Po, he got in a piece a few days after he learned that such a thing even exists and was already deflecting cannonballs with his bare hands. Also, very impressive. On to our final clue that favors the fact corner which is Po becomes Ugwe's successor. Now what I have to say here is why not Shifu? In all fairness, Po actually deserves this. But also, why not Shifu? This clue is not that grounded than the other two clues, but if you talk about a master that has put his life on the line just to hold up Ugwe's values, you can't look past Shifu. So yeah, why not Shifu? With all that being said, we have brought out three clues that favor the unpopular opinion. First clue, Po beats Tai Lung. Second clue, Po learns the wishy finger hold and in the piece, third clue, Po becomes Ugwe's successor. Now let's move on to the force corner. The first out of two clues that favor the force argument is Poe is a panda. During my investigation, I found out that this is the biggest plot point in the whole franchise. Poe being a panda answers almost everything that happens in the three movies. It connects all of the clues together. So much so, I started to feel that this was lazy writing. Poe being a panda answers why his pain threshold is so high. It answers how he was able to learn an inch of kung fu with his motivation being food. As we saw in part 3, pandas really love food. And most importantly, it answers Poe's connection with Chi. From part 1, when Poe did the wishy finger hold, I did not understand how he did it or how he learned it. Through the revelations of part 3 that tells us about panda's tight connection with Chi, I could say that Poe's ability to learn the wishy finger hold and probably in a piece as fast as he did was his connection with Chi. And not just that, Poe's Chi was clearly stronger than any of the characters in the movie. I studied the scene where Kai spoke through the zombies. Notice how Poe radiates even more than the Furious Five. 
Kai. I thought this was just a fluke at first, but in the scene where Paul meets Kai for the first time, it almost looks like Kai purposely squinted his eyes, and you could clearly understand that Kai was looking to see Paul's chi, which was vividly radiating. So not just that Paul is a panda with huge connections to chi, but he's a panda with a very strong level of chi. Now then, the last clue that favors the false corner is Paul gets better at kung fu. This is a huge fact that I think people normally like to use against him, that he does not get better at kung fu. You see, Kung Fu Panda makes us understand that each animal has their own style of fighting. Po in part 1 had not fully developed his, but had a grasp on it. Yes, he was clumsy while fighting Tai Long, but he used his own motivation being food mainly to fight, while still not understanding his full capabilities. In part 2, specifically in Gangnam City and his numerous encounters with Shen, I noticed a huge improvement in his style of Kung Fu. He's less clumsy, he's moving in sync with the Furious Five, and honestly could have even easily taking out Shen on two occasions, if not for his struggles with his past. In part 3, there was another jump in his kung fu. Paul's ability to pick up and grasp things so easily might not be based on hard work, but mainly due to the fact that he's a panda. That's why I felt that the panda plot point is a bit overused. Because he's a panda, his pain tolerance supersedes almost all of the characters, Shifu and the Furious Five included. Now we've brought out all the clues, it's time for me to answer. Is this unpopular opinion fact? Or false? It's false. <laughs> now the reason I say so, please follow me here, is the first false clue counteracts the first and second fact clue, while the second false clue counteracts the third and to some extent the first fact clue. Basically, Poe being a panda was reason enough for him to beat Tai Lung and learn the wishy finger hold and also in the peace. And the second shows that Poe's growth in Kung Fu and all of its intricacies like in a peace shows that he best describes what Ugre was like. Fun loving, humorous, but also strong and tactful. Well, that's it. Um, hope you guys liked the video. The thing is, I'm trying to make the videos more dynamic lately. Apparently, y'all didn't find my other video that interesting, but I'm still learning this YouTube thing and I'm still trying to grasp what people will like to watch. Don't forget to give me your unpopular opinions or thoughts in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed and liked the video, please do so. And yeah, God loves you. And I love you too. Bye-bye.